What's going on guys, Mitch here. Welcome to the vlog. Today we are gonna be doing a camera test. So today you're on the Hero 12 with Media Mod. Haven't tried it out, don't know what to expect. If you see this, maybe it didn't suck. Uh, going out on the SL8, I released my uh, SL7, SL8, etc. content actually this morning and it's the first video I think that's hit, uh, geez, a thousand views in the first like five hours, which is nuts. Anyway, I'm gonna go out on the bike, we'll talk. Let's go. All right guys, so we're out on the bike. Got the Media Mod all attached up. And hopefully you guys can hear me pretty good. Um, not a huge jump to go from the 10 to the 12, but apparently it's enough. So, uh, full disclosure. So this morning, I, uh, as I was kind of talking about, I, I put up my S-Works SL8 review video. And I, I can't even believe the kind of feedback that it got. It, uh, it surpassed a thousand views with pretty healthy watch time too. I, I didn't expect that on day one, maybe over a year, but that's awesome, man. Like anything to tell you guys, but I think you know it's honest. It's a good opinion. It's. I'm a pretty normal dude and ride this stuff in a pretty normal way. So it's great to see people reciprocating the love. Check out this view. So I'm really not that interested in the camera for the sake of, you know, improved whatever color profile, sharpening image. I think we've kind of got whatever GoPro is out of like, Kind of like the nine plus. So I really don't know if this is gonna be any different from a visual perspective. I rarely color grade any of my stuff. Uh, for me, the main reason I went to the 12 is you guys have probably known like for the last three years of vlogging, I've always kind of had two GoPros and I kind of cycle them out. And uh, last year I think I sold <laughs> two or three in one fell swoop in prep of getting the 11. I never did get the 11. I just, the, the upgrade was so minimal from the 10. And once again, the 12 to the 11 was pretty minimal other than a few super key features, which I, uh, I may not be using today, but to me, are kind of quietly going under the radar. One, the Bluetooth audio. That's a game changer. Because in theory, I could be recording on the device as well as recording from my headphones on separate audio tracks, which is, is pretty big. Depending on what happens that day, it could make or break a vlog. But having a dedicated mic on me would always be preferential. It's just, or having the ability to do that. That's always fun. Number two, the ability to separate the audio profile and tracks. I just go, where, like that's a software update. Where has that been for five freaking years? Look at this view, by the way. So that lake is Sokomi Lake and that's the that's the man-made lake that I, uh, I hold third place going around it. No big deal. Out of eight people, top half. I'm just kidding. Not about the third place, but there's like thousands. Great view up front too, look at this. Oh. Fun fact on that segment, you can only get it when this gate is open right ahead of me here and right now it's open do i dare go do another lap or should i push through the fact that i had 90 minutes of vo2 max work this morning and can hardly walk well that answer is pretty made clear with not been, not gonna do that what can i say just not interested today the separate audio track is pretty cool. I dig that. Just the ability to, you know, in Final Cut, that's what I use, 
to separate the audio is just I'm, I'm excited to try it out like I don't know yeah I don't know if, I, uh, if I'm gonna use it or what but just having that ability is pretty cool uh, and it also kind of opens the door that in conjunction with the the Bluetooth where it's like imagine you go for a ride and you have separate audio profiles and you could do a kind of like a, a ride cast kind of thing I think that'd be fun oh and then obviously the the frame rate improvements all that good stuff it is kind of what it is not a big deal to me going in and out of the dark right now which is just crazy maybe you can just kind of see what that looks like on the camera i don't know i'm sure it's improved marginally you guys see that bird nest uh, let's go back take a look so this area is kind of conservation-y so it's got a little nest there every time I ride by I'm craving eggs I don't know why so anyway um, as I was talking about a little bit before I kind of got off track for several minutes as is normal you know I'm sure you know the audio is good that'll be cool um, the ability to separate the audio cool the Bluetooth all that stuff that's good the improved picture and frames per second. I don't know who this is appealing to nowadays, but it's not me. I don't shoot slow-mo. Uh, in fact, today I'm shooting at 4K 30, which is kind of my standard. All my stuff is shot at that, unless, unless I'm going out of my way to do something to slow things down. That's what I always shoot at. So, you know, I think it has like the ability to do like 240 frames a second or something ridiculous. I don't know, look it up. I, I'm not the guy to tell you stats on a GoPro. I'm the guy that tells you that I just use GoPros, so. But 240, man, who's using this stuff? Like, that's crazy. I've got a driver behind me right now tailgating my ass and I'm going over the speed limit there we go I guess I've never really given you guys the time to talk about my camera setup or what I do in a season and maybe that's what I can do right now as I'm going down the road getting cut off by an SUV oh my god anyway so I actually use this uh, a standard GoPro whatever the seasonality is so I've been running a 10 and prior to that a 9 and a 7 and a 5 and I think a 2 and a session I've kind of had a number of them and they're always my primary camera and then <clears throat> this past year I've been running an Insta360 as my kind of backup camera for time lapses and you know dumb drivers and all that stuff which is certainly limiting because it really only shoots in 1080 you know i really truly believe 360 cameras are the future it's just when they say we shoot in i think it's five 5.3 or 5.7 k that's in a globe so when you pull a frame out of it it's still just 1080, which is fine on a time lapse. It's fine. You just drag it onto a 4K timeline and off you go. But when you try to pull something specific out of the camera, that's when you notice it. Where it's like, oh my God, this thing is like super blurry versus 4K and up, you can kind of punch in. So I, I you know, on this camera, I'm actually very curious to see you know to maybe even record in some 5k or that 8 by 7 this guy's going way too fast fuck man it drives me nuts when people speed through here because like this is literally where kids play drives me nuts anyway so i could see recording you know if you seen that new 8 by 7 which is like a big box a big square frame basically you can do some like shorts and some upright stuff. 
What a view. Look at the birds. What's up, dudes? I love that view every time we go by it. It's just so good. God, my legs feel heavy though today. Oh man, I need, uh, I need some steak. I need some meat. I need the meat. And eggs. So today, instead of the Insta360 being on time-lapse duty, I put my Hero 10 on the front of the bike. You know, cracked screen and all. I just put a new battery in it. Hopefully I can get, you know, two hours of 4K out of that. I'd be pretty pumped on that. Versus about an hour of Insta360 where, say I go for a long ride, You've got to be pretty selective where you want to throw a 10, 15, 20 minute segment into it. Ah, oh, God, I'm exhausted. Sorry guys. I don't even know if today's really a vlog or if it's just a come along for a ride and see what's going on. And me talking at 270 watts, making zero sense checking in the views. So assuming this video goes up, I'm genuinely interested to hear feedback on the SL8 review video. I know I'll hear it in the comments. People will say things, people will assume things. So yeah, I am genuinely curious to hear feedback. And uh, you know, I try, it's the first time I've actually like set up a little backdrop and tried to make it look good for the review. So yeah, normally I, uh, I just kind of throw the bike in the stand and do a whatever review. I point the camera on it and uh, you know, I talk, my mind, it's nothing scripted, which is kind of how I handle my business all the time. There's none of this stuff is scripted. As you can probably hear me rambling on for 10 minutes. Um, so I set up a backdrop and I set up a bit of a, bit of a display and I actually, uh, I had a little bit of thought to it instead of zero thought. So it was kind of cool to see that the video is doing super well. All right, so we are gonna wrap up the vlog there. And uh, hopefully, you know, me uh, rambling on. Uh, I don't know if I'd call this a vlog, more of just a, a chat and a state of the state of the union, I guess. But hopefully the video looks good. I'm trying it out, trying to get a bunch of different angles and test the shadows, the colors, all that good stuff. So thanks for stopping by guys. We will see you later in the week. But right now we're gonna take in the view. And this bend, whoa. Oh. Alright guys, see you later.